Hello, beautiful boss babes. Are you ready to chase life with Kelly? Well, I'm your host, Kelly Chase, and I'm so excited you're here. We are going to talk about all things love, dating, relationships, money mindset. We're going to dive deep into self-love, worthiness. I am going to bring on some incredibly empowering guests. We're going to have fun, we're going to laugh, and perhaps we're even going to shed some tears together. I am here to empower you, inspire you, and motivate you to create the life you crave. I am so excited for today's episode. Let's dive in. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the show. I have such a special guest on with me. And I know, I know, I know I say this like literally like every episode because every guest is so special, but I, she really is like, and I literally have only, well, I don't even know her. That's why we're really going to have this, but we're like on a friend date. We're going to be on a friend date today. I love it. <laughs> because I, I met her in person literally less than two months ago. Um, and prior to that, I've just started following her on Instagram. Um, and her page, she's just like, I mean, if you watch the YouTube or obviously if you go to her Instagram, after you check out, um, this podcast, like she's just like the most like sunshiny person. You just have this beautiful light about <laughs> you. She's just a beautiful smile. And I was just like, so drawn to her and like all of her pictures are just like, just very beautiful. And like I said, she just has this like aura, this light about her, this radiance. So I obviously like am drawn to people like that. So I was like, I have to like, and then when I met you at Stefan's event, I was like, I have to have her on the podcast. I just want to <laughs> know all about her. <laughs> oh, you're the sweetest. Thank you. You're so welcome. So yeah, everyone, welcome um, Heather Martin to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you. Oh, me too. Me too. Okay. So first things first, because this is what I just asked her. If you guys don't know who Heather Martin is, um, she was on The Bachelor, but of course, she is more than just The Bachelor. Like all of us reality TV people are, we are more than just our reality show. So I want to get to know her, her story. Um, but I do have to say this, her first kiss was on The Bachelor. <laughs> We're going straight into it. I like into it. Because it was very just so, so eye-opening for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different. It's unique. Sure. Yeah, I love that. Okay, you were on Colton season. Yes, Colton season. Yes. So that was like 2018. So it's been a bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's when we filmed Love is Blind. So yeah, it was. It oh, was really? Like, you guys didn't play, yeah. You guys came out. It came out later, right? Yeah. A few years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So how, okay. So I will ask you a couple of the basic regular normal questions about reality TV, but what, yes. it, how did you get involved with being on The Bachelor? So I was, so I have like a different, like I didn't go through the whole casting process. I didn't do really any of that. Um, my sister sent in like my older sister sent in like this, like joke video, like months before when they were like doing the casting thing. It was like a compilation of like random, like weird videos of me pretty much. And then her talking at the end, like why I should be on the show. And so I talked, like I had like one brief meeting and then nothing. And then literally a week and a half before the show, basically I was cast. They were like, I think obviously based on my story, Colton's story was that he's the virgin. And so my never been kissed thing. So when they cast him officially, I think it was like, of course they have to do this, you know? So I was super last minute cast, like truly a week and a half before the show and had to like get all the gowns, do oh. all the things. Like it was like, oh my gosh, a whirlwind. Um, but yeah. So it was right before. And then I kind of just like jumped right into it, having no idea what to expect or what like not mentally preparing at all, you know? So it was an interesting process for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, was it, I, I guess kind of take me through your experience being on the bachelor. Did you, had you watched bachelor prior to like, were you accustomed to the way the show worked and all of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like my favorite, like, I don't, I'm not a huge TV girl, but it has been like my show since I was like 15. Oh so God. it was really fun. It was like a blast. Yeah. I was in like, my go-to like with all the girls we'd have like in high school the parties and then call it like th seriously throughout my life like it's been my show so I kind of like was very well aware of like the process like obviously behind the scenes and stuff didn't know but that was like what I was most excited for yeah to be able to get to see like actually what it's like you know yeah so, yeah 
That's so cool. Were your expectations were, yeah. I, I mean, maybe like assumptions or expectations and, and the unknown of not how, knowing the ins and outs of being on the reality mm-hmm. show. Like once you were actually in it, was it more of a pressure cooker? Was it, or was it meeting some expectations that you may have had? I think, I think it was like, generally I had an idea of like what I thought it'd be like. And obviously you can never like imagine like the depths or how you're going to feel or like all the emotions behind it. Um, yeah, but for the general, the most part, it was kind of what I thought it was going to be like. Um, but I think like when I got into it, it was just a little bit more like, this is real. And like before it's like watching from your couch, I'm sure like you can understand it's like totally different than like watching, like, it's just like a different experience and like the actual feeling of like, this is going to be shown. And like, I didn't, I think it was like all lofty idea until I actually got there and I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. This is, people are going to see this and I'm on TV, you know, it's just like a, a different feeling. And so definitely a lot more pressure, but, um, for the most part, it was kind of what I expected. And I think maybe I took it a little too lightheartedly or lighthearted. I don't know. I think it was good in the long run, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was a blast. I had so much fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I kind of, you know, going back to love is blind, like I feel I wish that I had maybe taken things a lot more lighthearted myself. Like I was just, I was very, I mean, watching myself back was kind of, was very difficult for many reasons, but one of them was the fact I like had changed so much as an individual. Oh, for sure. sure. Like, you know, self-love and healing work and all of that kind of thing since Mm -hmm. filming. But, um, but I just like, I felt like I was being like, not, not too serious, but I was so like in it like about sure. like what's going on which and- I think is probably good for like you're like thinking r- maybe get married you know oh, yeah. like, that's true that's, that's very valid <laughs> I feel like that's good <laughs> you're right <laughs> that is very true but yeah I feel like maybe like I feel like when the cameras weren't rolling was when I was like maybe more myself in certain totally. ways like, for sure did you feel like the cameras were rolling? like did you in that experiment did it feel like tv or did it feel like more like less cameras more just like a genuine I'm um, always curious about that a little bit of both I mean I definitely was comfortable after like the first day of the cameras kind of like being in your face um for sure I was comfortable with that aspect but yeah I mean because you know, it wasn't like there was like hidden cameras in places like it was, mm-hmm. and they weren't filming us 24 seven. So for yeah. the eight hours that they were in our room or whatever, in the living room and stuff, it was kind of like, okay, like, obviously, I, I know that they're here, but we were having such like in depth conversations mm-hmm. that it was almost like nobody was around us. You like tuned it out. Yeah, yeah. It was really yeah, it was really interesting how we were, I guess, or speaking for myself here, how yeah. I was able to do that. Um, but yeah, sure. I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, but it's interesting. <sighs> it's hard to do, but yeah, I feel like if you're so focused on like one thing, it, it makes sense. You're like, okay, I can't, I can't pay attention to like the outside thing. I really got to focus on. Yeah, yeah, in front of me. exactly. Like the only time I like almost was like intentional about it, like oh, this is like a TV thing was like on our wedding day because it was Mm. so emotionally charged. Like I was, I cried so many times. I mean, they didn't show those parts too much, but you know, I just was so emotional or trying to hold back the tears and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I just, I remember like telling my dad because like, this is the first time your parents were seeing you in a wedding dress. Like, yeah, for me, anyways, I like I had been married before. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? so, uh-huh. Yeah. And like, this is something that, you know, we all dream of, you know, of like having that moment. So, you know, my mom walks in and I just, I couldn't, like, I was holding back the tears because I was like, no, nope, I'm not going to cry. Because my, like, like, <laughs> my mom is bawling, of course. And she's like, you know, she looks like, you're so pretty. And blah, blah. And then like, my dad walks in to see me in my dress and we both start crying. And, and oh, I just like, grabbed my dad and he was like, dad, just pretend it's like, we're acting. Pretend we're acting and we just like have to make it down the altar. And he's like, is oh, that what God. you told him? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did it feel like your wedding? Like, was that a feeling that you felt like this feels like a wedding or did it feel more like I like freaked out? Freaked out. Yeah. 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 Like it was just more like, oh my gosh, like this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, like, <laughs> sure. how did you this and what in the heck? I mean, I remember um, Vanessa Lachey, she, before I walked down the aisle, she came and talked to me and I'm sure Nick went and talked to Kenny too, but Vanessa sat on the couch with me and she started crying she like couldn't stop so of course I start crying and she was just like I'm so sorry and I was like okay, thank you and she was like I like I I can't imagine what's going on in your head right now and I'm like so sorry you have to do this kind of thing like we were obviously off camera that's sweet it, I know yeah, yeah. That's and I was really like sweet. oh my god like you know yeah. she has children so of course you know like for sure it's just hard. And like, that's something no one really probably, you're like one of the first people ever to have to, yeah, do anything like that. So not natural at all. So yeah, it yeah. was difficult. No but... one can really uh, sympathize or yeah, I try to empathize, but yeah, you yeah, can't empathize with that. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, hard. yeah, I, I know. It's like, it, it's so weird. Like, it's funny now too, because people, you know, people will ask me sometimes, they're like, so do you like when you're dating? Like, if people ask you, like, oh, have you ever been like married or engaged before? I'm like, Okay, well, obviously, I've never been married, but like, I'm like, do I tell them that I've tied? Does that count? Like, does that count? I mean, I don't think like like I don't refer to Kenny as my like ex fiance. I yeah. do feel like I do refer to it as a a guy I dated. Obviously, I mean, we did date for seven months or seven weeks, but yeah. You know, outside of that yeah it was just a very surreal experience that it's different. <laughs> yeah I have a lot of like traumas and all kinds of things oh I can imagine I can <laughs> yeah, that trauma, brought up past traumas it was a lot so all everything all in like a co really condensed period of time yeah it was it was okay so uh, back I, I'm gonna heart back on this on on your first kiss I understand that they wanted to match the virgin and the girl yes. Yes, right. Okay. So, but why had you not had a first kiss? How, what was your age when you, I was 22. So okay. I was pretty young. Um, but I mean, not, that was definitely abnormal for a 22 year old, but I think I had never like seriously dated. I just like have always in my life taken dating pretty seriously. And I didn't really just enjoy dating, um, just for fun. Like, it wasn't like a fun thing for me. I think I've always been like really secure in like my friendships and my family relationships and, um, really wasn't gonna give myself to someone or like really want to enter into that process unless I actually was like, thought it was going to be something, you know, more long-term. So I think I just took it a little bit more seriously and it was never something that I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be waiting till marriage to kiss someone or like any of those things that I really was like strong about, but it just, it was, I kind of just got to the point where it just hadn't happened because I hadn't really dated mm -hmm. super seriously yet. And so yeah, that's kind of all it really is. But um, yeah, it definitely became a big thing. I never thought I was going to have to be sharing it um, <laughs> on national television. <laughs> never was part of the plan, but you know, um, yeah, it was so funny. It's neat though. I mean, it, it is very admirable and, you know, for, for whatever reason, I mean, it's very respectful, you know. Um, I mean, I respect you for that because there's a lot, I feel like, um, you know, many of us just prematurely do things, um, you know, whether it's from kissing to holding a hand or, or whatever, or, you know, mm -hmm. having sex or something like it's like, we do those things because it's like, you know, maybe it's more or less like people pleasing, of course, and like wanting to be liked or accepted or like, oh, they're not going to like me if I don't hold their hand back or if I don't, you know, totally. back or whatever, you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It's, it's wild, but yeah, I just got to that point and I was like, okay, might as well just be open about it and let's, yeah. let's do it. But it was That's crazy. So cool. That's really cool. Did anyone, obviously you had not kissed anyone because of it, nothing had transpired to something serious, but did you have any like little boyfriend flings, I guess, like in high school? Like kind of like, like I had like dated in college a little bit, but like nothing like to the point where it was like, yeah, like a long term, you know. So like I'd been on dates, I had done the little, yeah, exactly little things, but nothing where I was like really excited about, I guess. Did the guys like did they ever try and kiss you? And you were like, no. I don't think I was like ever like giving I never like allowed. I think I'm a little bit closed. <laughs> so I don't think I ever it was never to the point where I was like, 
open. No one was like attacking me, you know? So <laughs> it wasn't like, yeah, no. So it was never like a almost situation, but. It's just so funny. Okay. So <laughs> I love it. I just, I'm not picking on you. I think it's like the cutest. Oh, no. Trust me. Yeah. All I, love I, love story. It. I, just think, I think it's so cool. I'm like, that is so admirable. Like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I think, like I said, I feel like a lot of us do things prematurely that, you know, can create down the road, longer stories for us. But, you know, it's like, okay, when I had my first kiss, yeah, maybe it was like 15 or 16, I think, mm-hmm. but it's like, why, like, oh, it just led to heartache really quickly thereafter. So. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I think that was a thing. Like I really just have always just like guarded my heart really like tightly and maybe to a point where it to a fault, you know, um, I definitely could be on that side more so, but I think that's just something I've always just, yeah, I've tried to guard my heart as much as possible mm-hmm. and really only give that to someone who I feel like, you know, it right. could be something you're worthy of that. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that come from? I mean, I know that you are, um, you're, I, I know you share like a lot of like, uh, Bible verses mm-hmm. um, Instagram story and stuff. So was, Christianity, like, I mean, has that always been like a really big part of your life or religion in general, I guess? It has. Yeah. I, I've, I've grown up, my parents, um, really strong in their faith. Um, so I've grown up in the church, grown up in a Christian family and, um, it's always been something that's super important to me. It's always been something that I've leaned back on and relied on and like, just been like kind of the core of my life. And so I think all growing up and like, I went to like a public high school, very much like crazy everything. And then I went to a private Christian school. And I think that's where I really, it was been like, so huge for me to actually learn way more about my faith. I did a a minor in Bible and just like really solidified that. Um, and so now, yeah, but it's always been something that's kind of just been such a core thing in my life. Yeah. I love that. Is that, um, is that a part of like why you're guarding your heart? So I think so. First, I mean, for sure. Yeah. I think that's something it was not like, oh, I'm, you know, not going to kiss because, you know, like not these certain very strict things, but yeah, I think that's why I have been so protective of my heart and something I'm just like, I want, I know what I'm looking for and I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. And I think I kind of always have been. And so there's not a surplus of those type of men out there. And so I think I've always just kind of just saved that for whoever that person is going to be, you know, hopefully. (laughs) I love that. I love that. What, um, how does, okay. So after I want to say this too, because after my show, like I invested in like mindset coaches and life coaches and things, cause I just felt like so shaken up, shook it up from that experience. But Mm-hmm. Did being on the bachelor have any type of negative impact on you? And how did you, you know, maybe lean more into your faith for, mm-hmm. through that? It definitely was. I think after the show, it was, it was a little shaking, just coming, like, I think not really being prepared to go into the, the situation and just like quickly being thrown into it. And then like, you know, everything taken away, no phone, same thing for you. And then like being like, okay, back to work, back to like immediately it's like back to normal life. And you just feel like, like, whoa, what just happened? So I think, and also I didn't have, I was like, did not love social media in college. I had an Instagram my friend created, did not use it. (laughs) But then I was like, okay, I'm going to like, you know, it's an opportunity that's presenting itself. Of course, I'm going to be wise and, and start using it and start, you know, so I think getting into that world and like the social media world, which I wasn't really super familiar with, didn't like it to start with, uh, all really was like culture shock for me. Um, so yeah, any, like the negative comments and all those things were definitely like the negative part of leaving the show. And I, it wasn't crazy, but it was definitely like, did it, you know, it affects you as much as like, you don't want it to, or you say it won't, it does. Um, but I think there's one of the executives who's no longer there from bachelor told me right before like everything was airing he's like you have to listen he's like the one piece of advice i give you is you have to listen like you can't don't listen to the negative comments because they don't know you and he's like at the same time you can't listen to the positive comments like on your social media because they don't know you you know like they're seeing this curated version of you and it's just 
they, none of these people know who you are. So it's like, that's both good and both bad. And he's like, just like, you have to rely on like the people who are in your circle and in your corner who know you and love you and like, know your character. And those are the people that you have to like, listen to, and they are going to speak into who you are and to like, encourage you and call you out sometimes, you know, all those things. And I think that was like the best advice I got, because I was like, when all these comments were flooding in like an episode that something went well, it's like amazing comments and that feels good. But then it's like the next week, it's like something, (laughs) you had something weird, at least you looked weird and people are like attacking, you you know? So you just like, it just fluctuates. And I think that was like the best thing to like listen to during that time. And, and yeah, go back on my faith and what God, how God views me and all those things. So that was super, super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. It, and I feel like back to nation world is a lot more intense um, than <laughs> I mean, really, you think, is it? <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess I've heard that too. Like, I just feel like they, they are intense. Yeah. Very intense. Yeah. You guys' mm-hmm. fan base is very intense, but like, okay. So for, for our show, yes. Like, I mean, I don't know. I think it was like 30 million people like viewed our season one, which is wild. Um, and it was yeah. like international, you know? So we had people from all over the world tuning in. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I feel like bachelor it's more nationwide, like the United For States sure. more or less, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. everyone's just like here and compact and they're just, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that, but that's so true. Yeah. It's like not, it is like very specific and it's like a specific niche of like, like my, like Instagram, it's like my whole following is like 95% female between 18 and 34, whatever, you know, it's like very specific. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So speaking of social media, you went from not really ever using it. So now you're an influencer and you use it all the time. So how is that? It is weird. <laughs> Life is weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fun. How- I know it is crazy. I I'm learning. I still feel like I'm in the process of like learning social media because it's just so not natural to me. And like, I'm not naturally a creative. I'm not naturally like, it's just like, so like sh- very like open to the world about sharing my everyday. I'm like, why do people care about what I had for breakfast? I don't know. I don't care. You know, it's like, <laughs> so I, it's, it was definitely like a shift and it's still, I still feel like, I'm like, I still feel new. It's been like five years and I still feel like a baby, like trying to like learn and like, it's just not my natural wheel in my natural wheelhouse. So it's such an interesting, it's such an interesting thing, but it's been good. And I think that's been challenging for me, but I think that's always positive, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I mean, I've been using social media for quite some time because I was doing like health coaching and life coaching. Oh, were you before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I guess when, I'm not gonna say when Instagram like first came out, it was like 2012 maybe 12 or 13 is when I joined Instagram. I think it had been out for like a year or two, but that's like when, Which is like when it was getting big though, for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I would use it. I would just post a lot of stuff in it in that regard, but it's funny because since like going on love is blind and then going through my own like spiritual awakening of some sort, like it's felt a lot harder to not, not now because I feel like I'm, I'm through it. I'm through the like, <laughs> <laughs> the weeds of everything, but <laughs> since yeah. love, like, I feel like since love is why aired probably. And like, even like that year before, um, I just, I mean, I basically like, yeah. So I like had like a spiritual awakening, like back in 2000 and like the end of 2018. So like right after we got done filming love is blind, like I invested in a mindset coach who was probably like the therapist that I should have had my entire twenties. And I never had, um, <laughs> she, just, she did a lot of, um, just like inner child work with me and a lot of like, just helping me to connect within and find myself and discover who I really was. And mm-hmm it's really an interesting journey because like you feel like you are learning this whole new person. And I was a lot of like the comparing and imposter syndrome and how do I show up online now? Like, I don't even know who I am. Like, how am I supposed to show up online? (laughs) For sure. It's hard. Yeah. And then, and then like our show aired 
And I'm like, the world was introduced to this version of me that we filmed it 16 months ago. Like I am totally a different person now. So it's like, especially going through all that right after for sure. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, okay, I really don't know who I am. The world's telling me I'm one way. Like I'm thinking I'm something else. I have to forget everything I like have learned to know and like, yeah, who I am. So it was a lot of just like inconsistent thoughts going on within me and everything. So it was very difficult for me to like, I I don't want to say I've been like inauthentic in what I'm posting about, but I know, like I have this like gut innate feeling, like I'll post something and it's just very blah. And I'm like, that didn't feel good. Like, that's not me. Like I used to be the girl who would write like the like blog captions, Mm -hmm. like every thought, like person had to read it. Like it was funny because like one of my best friends one time, she was like, Cal, like, I, I can't read all of your stuff. And I was like, well, <laughs> you're also like a mom. Like, so no mom is going to sit there and scroll. I'm more so probably talking to the single girl who's sitting on her couch that has nothing better to do. Yeah. It's, it's like your audience for sure. Yeah. It's my audience. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. I'm like, I'm like, but I can't just like write like a peace sign on my, <laughs> like, yeah, it's not you for oh, sure. Yeah to share a story but over the last few years I like did the story stuff for a little bit and then I was like again I just felt so miscombobbled in who I was that I started just posting the peace sign and I was like all right that's it like I'm just posting something to post something and it it didn't feel like a meaning behind it so for sure now I feel a lot more centered and grounded but it was definitely a journey and like I said after like after the show aired and again, it was just like another like whole identity crisis. I felt like, and I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's super confusing. Like, and having people like view you in one way and then then expect you to be that way. And you're like, but I'm not that way anymore. Like that would be super, super Mm -hmm. confusing for yourself. Like, I don't, am I, am I not like that is, I can't even imagine that would be really, yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting journey for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's so wild. Um, but yeah, <laughs> goodness, so. um, yeah. yeah, that is so interesting that they, the way that they like don't air it for, did you guys know that that was going to be the case or they weren't going to air it for a while? I want to say kind of, um, I don't think we thought it was going to be like close to a year and a half. I think we thought it was maybe going to be like eight months or something like that, but you know, within the year, but yeah, I mean, I feel like if I'm not um, incorrect here, I want to say that when we were filming, like there were Netflix like producers that were like on set with us and stuff, but I don't like, they were learning the concept of the show. Like, I don't think that they had actually like um, bought the concept yet. Oh, so it wasn't like for sure picked up. Right. Okay. So it was yeah. kind of, it was a tester in all different kinds of ways. <laughs> yeah, 100%, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, if I'm correct, like, I'm pretty sure that that's accurate. Like, I think the Netflix, like sometimes they would like pop in and like watch and like do their thing. But I, yeah, I don't think it had been picked up by Netflix yet. So did you know, sorry, I'm so curious. So did you know, like what you were like the full concept when you signed up for the show? Were you like aware, like, oh, after this amount of days, we're going to get engaged and then married yeah and- yeah okay I so you were like fully they like they fully flesh out everything yes yeah so they okay. did um the only thing it was funny because I like I told my parents the concept of the show minus the wedding part at the end I didn't okay <laughs> not at first I didn't say that first like the day before I think it was the day or two before I was supposed to leave to go filming I like went to go say goodbye to my parents to be like, Hey, like I'm gone obviously for 10 days or whatever. And, um, I told my mom that my dad just happened to be like at a grocery store or something or somewhere. And I was like, dang it. I wish dad was here too. But I told my mom and I was like so nervous to be like, cause I thought she was going to be like over my dead body. Are you going to <laughs> maybe put yourself in a situation where you could get married <laughs> like that? Like this totally. is not, you know, so unconventional, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But her response was like, Oh, well, I mean, kind of like, if that's the way it's supposed to happen, that's the way it's supposed to happen. Just keep like an, like an, an open mind. And I was like, 
do you want grandchildren that bad? Like you're, you're like, like mom. <laughs> away <at> a TV <laughs> <land."> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. <laughs> He's like, whatever you got to do. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny, but I was like, I was like, mom, I'm so picky. Like I'll be back. Like I'm, I'm not even going to make it through like the pods. I, there's no you way. You thought for sure it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and, and that was like a part of like why I was like, there's no point in me even like scaring them thinking that there's going to be like this wedding involved. Cause I'm not even going to make it. So like, why even bring it up? But I guess oh, that like yeah. that instinct, like right before I was leaving, I was like, well, maybe I should tell them just in case, but it was That's like the slimmest chance. And then <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God. But <laughs> uh, it probably gave you the freedom to like feel comfortable to like even be open to it too. Because if you did it and then you're like, Oh my gosh, sorry, actually, <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. sorry. but yeah, that'd be more pressure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely crazy. <laughs> it is so yeah. I think bachelor's crazy, but love is line is it's a different level for sure. <laughs> Which makes it so entertaining for, for the audience. Yeah. yeah. It, it was, it was definitely entertaining <laughs> for everyone else. Maybe not you, but <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was like, I mean, granted now I can watch, you know, like season two and season three that came out, like, obviously like I can watch it. And it's so crazy though. Like I want to say in season two um, and maybe again, this was just because I was going through my own identity crisis. And so I was just like, not as connected, aligned with God <laughs> at the time. I don't know, but like yeah. I found myself getting wrapped up in the production of season two. So I was like, Oh my gosh, he's treating her like poop. And I was like, wait a second, that's probably a production edit. Like, you know, like, so I had to like, remind myself during some of season two and probably season three of like, okay, I, they're creating their own storyline. No, but literally nobody knows the actual truth of the show, <laughs> except for the people who filmed it. For sure. And it, it's so, they're so good at it that it's so hard to not like you as you're a viewer. It's like so hard to not be like, of course this what happened. That's what I'm seeing. Of course it's occurred. <laughs> Right. I know I've noticed myself doing that too. I'm like, Heather, nope. That would you want people saying this about what happened to you? Because what that didn't happen, you know. It is easy though, because they are good at their jobs and that's like kind of what what they do. Yeah, yeah. It's so wild. Um, okay, so what are you okay? So you're doing influencer things and that is like your main career right now. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. I was working for an engineering company doing project management before and then it was not my field. I was not excited about it. And so, yeah. So transition fully into doing this and it's been, yeah, it's kind of what I'm doing full time now, which has been fun and different yeah. and hard and weird, but also like amazing in so many different ways. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that it's given you so much opportunity. I mean, meeting different people, I mean, to brands that you get to work with and just mm -hmm. all, all across the spectrum, I guess, but I mean, it's so fun. Totally. It is fun. It is something like I never in my wildest dreams would ever have like expected or even like dreamed of really. Like I would never have like hoped for it because it wasn't even in the realm of possibility, but yeah, I'm so grateful. And it does. It's so many opportunities and so many ways to like challenge myself and put myself out there and all, all the things. So. Yeah. Do you feel you, you noted earlier that you like really weren't like a creative person has this like tapped into that creativity. <laughs> it has. It totally has. Um, yeah. I mean, it's still a challenge, but for yeah. sure. Like I, I have like the growth, I feel like in that realm from whatever, 2018 to now, definitely. Like, I'm like, look back at that, like the beginning of all of it. And I'm like, Whoa, okay. I've definitely, cause I like, you know, it's gradual. I, like you don't really feel like you've improved or you always like comparing yourself to like, other people are doing and I'm not as whatever, you know, all the things, but yeah, looking back from like the beginning to now, I'm like, okay, I've like, I've definitely improved. There's, a, <laughs> there's been <laughs> improvements and, and it's, it's gotten easier, I think, and more fun for sure. Yeah, so absolutely. that's so cool. Are there particular, um, brands or like, not, you don't have to list specific ones, but I mean like more of like an industry that you like creating content for more. I think I love, I mean, I definitely love like the clothing companies, the fashion companies, they're the easiest, I think, to because it feels most natural and what I'm excited about. Also, I'm such a foodie, so love yeah. the food brands. When I love it, like uh, anything I like it with that, that's always super exciting. And then, and then all like 
anything country I try. It's like, I'm really into country music. So okay. the festivals I get to, like, I've done a few things with different companies at like festival, like a stagecoach or like a different okay. country one last year in Florida. And it was like, that's my dream. I was like living, like got to like go to the VIP section of like my three favorite country artists and like stay in a nice hotel. And like, I'm getting paid to do this. Like I would pay good money for this. So those are the things that are like so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's so cool. It was, it's funny because like, I feel, and again, I think just cause I was like going through so much um, internally, but I felt like I like didn't ride my influencer wave the best that I could have. Like, mm-hmm. because there's been, and, and again, it was just like my inconsistency and my like men- own mental health. I think that was like doing it, but I like, I felt like I was like, couldn't really create, I wasn't being, I don't know, like, you know, when you're like watching a commercial and things just look so pretty and like aesthetically. And I was just like, I just like don't even have the energy to like create something that looks like it belongs on TV or like in an advertisement in a magazine. Like it's, it's like, hard. It's like yeah. really hard. yeah, it's a lot of energy to like create it is. content. I think so, people underestimate how much it like looks like it would be because that's the goal, right? To make it look simple and beautiful. And it's like, no, it takes like to get that. It takes a lot to make it yeah. look effortless when it's really not effortless. But yeah, were you it, still doing your your health coaching and stuff during that that time, like through social media and stuff like that? Yes, I was. Um, so and it was interesting because I had kind of like pivoted a bit from like the actual like. So I started health coaching in 2013 and I did that up until like, I want to say like 2019, I was like more so titling myself as a health coach. I was more focused on, you know, nutrition as well as like exercise. So fitness and nutrition more so, but then, like I said, I had this whole like spiritual awakening. I started studying like the mind and how our mindset is and Mm-hmm. it just really, and doing the deeper work, I guess, to like really tap in and like heal my traumas and things like that. So mm-hmm. I decided to like pivot myself into more of the like mindset coach life. Okay. Coach space. And again, I think I was just like, so in it myself that it was hard to, I don't know, like not say like have clients because I was having clients, but it was just very inconsistent because my mind was very inconsistent. (laughs) I mean, like I would have like a beautiful, I mean, I would have like a successful month in my coaching. And then I was like, what did I do to get that? Because I don't feel like I can do it this month. Mm -hmm. And then I would like not market myself at all. And you know, and then I would just like throw up the, like I said, like the little fashion content with like a peace sign or something. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, expecting like the clients to be like knocking down my door. And I'm like, okay, Kelly, you're not putting effort into it. And granted, had I just like really dove headfirst into it, then, you know, and kept that going. And yeah, sure. I'm sure I would have been like still really doing a lot of the life coaching stuff. But mm-hmm. I also, I feel like I felt a bigger resistance, um, over the last year, not just because of like the inconsistency, but I felt like I was just like made for bigger things. And Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of resistance to, I liked being on a call with someone. Like, I mean, I could help someone all day, but like gearing up to have the call or set the appointment or do the discovery call or anything like that. Like I like had a lot of resistance around that. And I was like, I shouldn't have that. Like, yeah. So, but it's like, if someone were to like set me up with someone and then get me on a zoom or have me in person with that, mm-hmm. and like, hey, tell me your life and let me, let me help you dive into that. Then that's it was, where you thrive. That's where I thrive. So I was like, okay, how can I do that in a different way? I mean, granted, I'd already launched the podcast in 2021, but I was like, maybe that's what I need to focus on right now is like really honing in on the podcast and impacting. I mean, cause if there's hundreds or thousands of people that listen to this, Versus the one client I can have on a phone call, right? For sure. I can create more impact this way and then creating content around all of the things that I've learned and help people in that way too. And how many people can you affect by that? Like so many. Exactly. So that's that's kind of what I'm leaning into for 2023 is just kind of building both of those. I I started a um, outside sales job just like a month and a half ago too. So like how- and yeah, to have the consistent income and, you know, to like regulate my nervous system. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, 
but otherwise like, and I'm so happy about it. Like, I mean, even I went to a, um, one of my clients today, a new, not, they're not new. I'm new. So I was like going to introduce myself and everything. And they were like, Oh, like, you know, what did you do? What's your background before coming into this industry? And I was like, Oh, I like have a podcast. I was life coach, like blah, blah, blah. And they're like, Oh my God, that's so cool. And they're like, what's your podcast? They were like, ask me all these questions. And I was like, this is so fun. And I was like, yeah, I'm like looking to do like more public speaking events. And they were like, well, if you want to come practice, like at, for our firm, like you can totally come. Oh, and, like, amazing. Like, cool. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So it's like, you know, sometimes we just have to like let go, like completely let go of something to really welcome something new in. So <laughs> I know where I'm at right now. <laughs> I love that. That's exciting. Like a new journey and like kind of new, but kind of not new, but that's really exciting. Right. It yeah. sounds like very promising. Thank and you. I definitely can see like, this seems like it would be like from knowing you for however many right. minutes, <laughs> it's like you are so built for it. So yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. What, um, like, what has always, I mean, obviously the influencer thing, was that something that you ever have, I mean, granted you were never like a social media person, but like, was that ever a thing that you were like, Oh, I would like really like to do that. Like be an no. influencer. Was that ever a thing? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> like it just like, wasn't even something that I ever even thought about. Like it just, it was never going to be, a, you know, <laughs> like I, just, I, I didn't even ever like, Oh, would I like that? Would I not? Like, I didn't even, don't even think I took, the time to stop even to consider it because it just, it was not, I studied business marketing in college. So I guess I had like a little bit of like, I did like a social media class and you know, things like that, but it was so different. It was like, kind of like, I feel like even when I was in college, like it was kind of the beginning of people even able to make a, a living on social media, you know, it was like just in that beginning phases. So totally, it was definitely never my dream. That's for sure. Um, but now I'm like, this is my dream, <laughs> which is awesome. This is like, I couldn't think of anything more that I would want to do. Like it's, it feels very, um, it feels it's the flexibility. And it also just feels like I can like talk about again, same with you, like can talk about things I'm passionate about and can share the things that I love and my faith and all these things that I feel like this platform just kind of just got dropped into my lap. And so there, I definitely feel like a purpose behind it more so than I, than I did. Um, with my previous job. So it's been awesome. Yeah. Prior to pursuing this though, I mean, years ago, like before even doing bachelor, like, did you ever have like a dream job in mind? I, I not really. I always like, it had always been, um, a dream to work with my sister. I have two sisters. I'm in the middle of three. So I always like, it was like, when we're moms, like I'd love to have our own little business or something like that. And so that kind of still is something we would love to do, but I didn't have like one certain thing that I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to do something. I think relationally was always been important to me. Like I, I didn't want to be like Mm. at a computer all day, not being able to talk to anyone. So I didn't have like one specific thing and we're like, this is it. But I think something in the relational field, I think if I wasn't doing that, I would be doing something like something, hopefully, yeah. you know, to do with people. And even like an outside sales thing, like my sister did that too. And something, something like that interacting with people. So yeah, it's definitely, it, it's funny because like, I mean, I've done outside sales here and there a little bit before, um, in previous corporate roles. Um, but it was more like, I mean, I had to like get on a plane to like go visit clients. So it wasn't something I was like in my car every day. And now that is what this role is. So it's like a constantly ever changing environment, which is like, I think really healthy for me <laughs> right now. Yeah. Because before I was like sitting in my house, like on zoom calls, like all the time or, you know, doing, creating content, but I'm like in my house, like I didn't have like a reason to leave really. Totally. <laughs> totally. Which it, it, you get, like, you go crazy if you don't yeah. like have like a certain, for sure, like getting out there. I've noticed that too. Like certain times I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go outside. Even just like sit around people. Like you have to, to be with people is, is so important. Yes, it, it definitely is. Um, okay. So how has your, um, I guess, do you date now? Like what is dating like now after the show? And like, what are, what was like the biggest thing that you learned from being on The Bachelor? Ooh, um, 
dating now, I, I think I'm in a place where I'm, I'm open and I think, um, I have dated and, you know, it's been a journey. I think it's been right after it was really weird. I don't think I dated for a little bit because it was just like, I don't know. It was all, everything was chaos, but, um, I definitely dated since. And I'm, I think I'm in a place now where I'm, I'm open. And I think that's for like a, I haven't always been open. So I think it's like, a, a, I'm in a good spot for me where I'm like, I feel actually truly open and, um, would be ready for that whenever that would come into my life. So yeah, yeah. it's been good. It's been good. Um, but what I've learned, I feel like, I think the, the biggest thing that I learned from the show is like, just like to be bold. I think that's like the number one thing that I felt like I grew from and I learned from. And I think for me, I've always, it, it's been, that's been something that I've always wanted to be like, I want, but I've always like had these like fears or like these things. I'm like, Oh, what are they going to think or whatever? You know, I was like always more reserved, a little bit more shy. And so I think from all of this, like the number one thing that I always like during the whole process of the show was like, I told myself like my phrase, I told myself was to do it afraid. And like, I'm never going to not like not be scared or not be afraid, but I just like, just go for it and just do it anyways. Um, and I think that's been so challenging, but amazing. And something that's like really transformed me because I just said like, I don't think I'm ever going to get to the point where I'm sitting here and like, I'm not scared of doing something or being bold or just saying how, what I feel. But when I, every single time that I've done it or I do it, like you just feel so much more confident and so much more empowered. And so, um, yeah, I think that that was huge for me. So true. That's so, so true. It's interesting too, because you said that that was something that like carried you through, um, while you were filming and I wrote on, uh, a journal that they gave us, um, the first day it was like every opportunity creates another opportunity. And it's like, that's that. something that I come back to. I mean, even like, like I said, like getting this new job, like I had a lot of resistance to like getting a corporate job, but I was like, I have to, like my nervous system was like freaking out. Um, <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, having inconsistent, like just finding yeah, totally. it's, it's just you're like, like, I need something for my own sanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But you know, but I kept reminding myself of my own mantra and I was like, Kelly, like, you know, that there's so much more opportunity on the other side of that door. So like, just apply like and I went slap happy on LinkedIn I was like I'm just applying to like everything and anything that I saw did you <laughs> mostly interesting I'm like sure like and even like a friend of mine she was like um she was like Kelly like why don't you apply for like marketing roles because I had only really ever had like sales roles or account management that type of thing and I was like oh well, I mean I don't technically have like corporate marketing experience and she's like you've ran your business and you're totally like, that's some experience. Yeah, like, that's your experience. And I was like, Oh my God, you're right. She's like, even like being like a social media, like coordinator or something or manager, or, like something to do with someone's social media, like you, sure. do that. you have experience in that. <laughs> oh my God, right. So like, then it started to expand me like other, um, opportunities that I was applying for too. I mean, granted mm -hmm. I have a sales role, but it's technically, I mean, cause I'm doing outside sales. I'm marketing our company, basically. Mm -hmm. like, that is marketing, yeah. Anyway, just, yeah. Everybody's happy and seeing how I can like really like hone in on their needs and concerns, but yeah, and they're walking billboard, like showing up at their office. I'm There's, from, that's literally. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it seems so perfect for you. Yeah, that's. Fun. Do you enjoy that? Is that something? Have you been liking it? Yeah, I mean, I've only today was actually my first. Um, my first office visit by myself. Um, the oh, last, wow. yeah, the last couple of weeks I've been with like my manager or, uh, and or mm. another associate. Um, but today was, and I, I did like it. Um, I liked it a lot just because I just, I don't know, like I feel sometimes if there's another person and especially if it's like my superior, I feel like the conversation may be led more by that person versus me leading the conversation or For you know sure. having more control over the conversation. So I felt like more in my power and like I was building a connection and a relationship with that person versus her only hearing from me every so often when I was chiming in to add mm -hmm. to the conversation, you know? So For sure. I'm going to be the one that you're going to probably see more often than maybe my, you know, my other bot, my boss or associate. So it's like, 
I was kind of glad that I was making that. Yeah. Just solo that connection. Yeah. You can definitely get more of that connection. That makes sense. Yeah. That's so, awesome. That's yeah, exciting. But I love having, I mean, I love having my associate, my boss come with me too. I mean, it's, it's all oh, totally. Fun. Yeah. And for everyone to like have a face with a name, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't feel, I mean, just woman, she was definitely like telling me the truth about a lot of things and <laughs> that, she did, that she didn't love about our company. And I was, she was like, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to sugarcoat it. And I'm like, I don't want you to, I want you to tell me the truth so that I can go back and address these issues and totally. hopefully be able to resolve them and give you, um, give you the solution that you're looking for so that we can actually do more business together. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm sure she loved hearing that too. You weren't yeah. like you weren't trying to, yeah. You're just like, okay, let's figure it out. Right. Exactly. I'm like, all right, that sounds good. I mean, <laughs> Camp over here, but <laughs> she was totally good first experience. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely very nice, but just like I said, just very honest in what, with what she was sharing with me. So, but it was fun. Oh, it like was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. I like meeting people. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, but but outside of like the new role, I mean, like I said, just continuing the podcast and um, co creating content. I have potentially two speaking gigs already lined up for this. Wow. Year. Yeah. For what, what are they specifically for? Um, I want to say it's more of like women empowerment, um, okay. conferences, or I think one's more of like an actual, like a speaking, like two day event or something will be in uh, Denver, Colorado, I think. Um, oh, wow. yeah. Amazing. And then the other one, the, um, uh, my friend is still working things out. She's like, it's either going to be like a virtual series or I want to do it in like Bali. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> one or the other <laughs> yeah, but hers would be more of like an intimate like I think more of like a women's retreat so okay like, doing like a lot of like yeah just like inner child and like really mm -hmm. like staying within and that kind of thing so, yes. so that'd yeah. be like more like one-on-one -on -one, like smaller group type situation yeah, exactly but I just I just love being I love being around people so I know that that's like again like just kind of like my next step of like what I I'm here to do, I guess is, I mean, that scares me. Like, I don't really love talking in front of people. Like I do, but I'm shaking like the whole time. It's scary. Yeah. I'm sweating profusively, like do the whole night. <laughs> I love it. Like I love creating impact. I feel like sometimes I can crack a joke and I don't even know what's going to come out of my mouth. Like it just happened. <laughs> like, oh my God, you're laughing. <laughs> you're like, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> so that's so awesome. I know if people who are, aren't afraid, like at all, I'm like, something's like, that's weird. Like you, even if like you're good at it and it's your natural skill, I feel like there's right. still a level of like nervousness to, yeah. you know, yeah. public speaking or whatever, like getting up yeah. in front of people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, it's funny because like one thing that I've had, I don't know, it's my own like self dialogue, of course, but granted I've had friends, I guess in the past say this to me, but they're like, you know, you're so, you're so on social media and like, you're so like doing your own thing. Do you think that like intimidates guys from actually like wanting to date you and be with mm -hmm. you and stuff? And you know, I, I, again, I've done like a lot of like self-love work and everything. And I'm like, and I know that there's so many guys out there who also do this type of work and are public speakers and they lead retreats and they're coaches and serial entrepreneurs and like all this, like there are people like me out there. And so I'm like, before I think I was kind of maybe trying to persuade myself that like, no, I'm like, it's fine, you know, but like now I'm getting older. I'm in like mid thirties and I'm like, okay. So like there's a part of me that is like, maybe I am a little intimidating to people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to place, like, I'm not going to like hold myself back and play small because to fit someone else's mold. Like I know that there's, I guess that I have evidence that there's other people out there that are doing what I enjoy doing too. So I know that there's going to be someone that's going to fit with. Yeah. And you don't want someone that's going to be like, you want someone who's like, even if they're not in the same right doing the same thing that they can just like, be like, yeah, like that's my girl. And she like, that's like amazing right. that they got you. And they're like, so proud and like can support from, you know, not the center of attention, but like, Absolutely. someone yeah. who's intuitive about that. You're like, no, that's not what you want. 
No. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't want someone that's like insecure to be with me either. So yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> they should be like, heck yeah, I got this girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, what type of guy are you looking for? I mean, I know that you're just kind of like opening yourself up now, but <laughs> I'm not, I really do not have a physical type like at all. Um, yeah, like at all. Like I, I, it's weird. I, people always ask, I'm like, I like tall, like, cause I'm tall, but I don't really have a physical type. I really like, I like people who are confident, obviously. And I like funny is something that I really, I really value just like a sense of humor that like I click with. Um, and then mostly someone who's just like servant hearted and kind and like looking out for like other people's needs above their own. And really like has an eye on like the underdog. That's like one of my favorite qualities Mm. in someone. So yeah, yeah, which is, it's hard to, it's hard to come by, but, um, but yeah, that's kind of the general gist. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I think that you have already, I don't know, like, I want to say like, there are certain, there's so many things that we have both already done. So unconventionally, I guess, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's not the norm, you know, but I think that that's kind of like beautiful to have, you know, as a quality and characteristic for ourselves is like, yeah. you know, it's like I said, it's very admirable that you maybe haven't dated a lot of people or, you know, kiss <laughs> dogs, you know, that kind of thing. I think that's just so cool. Um, Thank I wish you. That, I wish that I could go back in time and unkiss a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, but, right, okay, what, what's your top? What's what are you looking for? I'm curious. What's your number one? Or number um, one? I want to say I do want funny as well. Like someone who has a great sense of humor. Um, but like emotionally connected and like mm-hmm. feel really safe and feels really safe with me. Mm. So I feel like yeah. I've had. I feel like I've had people that have been. Um, like have held space for me and I feel like I can be very vulnerable and then I share my life story and then they break up with me kind of thing. So then, mm-hmm. then I don't feel emotionally safe with them, but you know, but then I question again, just through a lot of the self-love work that I've done, it's like, okay, well, how am I, like, I feel like maybe I'm not providing a safe, like emotional safe environment for them. And maybe that's why they don't feel like they can be as vulnerable with me or like open up to me. Mm-hmm. So just something I've been questioning, not because I'm like, Oh, why doesn't anyone want to be with me? Kind of thing. It's just like, okay, but maybe there is something that I'm not Mm -hmm. offering that I would like to. So I don't know. I read the, um, there's this girl woman on Instagram. She's actually like a sex therapist or something, but she, I'm listening to her audio book right now. It's called like the game of desire, but it has like a PDF with it and it has questions to like ask potentially like a prior, like, boyfriend or someone that you've been romantic with. Interesting. Yeah. But to like really, um, kind of like, uh, collect information from them of like how how, maybe like what your strengths and weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. Someone that you've romantically been with. I've done that. I did it a couple of years ago with like my best friends, but like, I, I've never done it with like a romantic partner. So I'm like, I kind of want to go back and like, like, yeah. some, you know, with like a, a guy who I've dated in the past who's now still a friend or whatever, like, and go to yeah, he's still in contact with. Yeah. Cause it's all about awareness and just like, if you have the awareness, then you can better yourself. And it's not to say that there's anything bad or wrong with me. It's just like, okay, wow. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Like, am I self-absorbed in this area? Like I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I know. And it's so interesting. Cause you usually wouldn't like people aren't always like the most honest, like when you break up, it's like, they don't tell you every little thing, but that is such a valuable information to know. Like, Uh, like, yeah. Cause we all have blinders on certain things that we do. Um, wow. That's super interesting. I've never heard that, but that's really, that's really interesting. Yeah. But I'm like, I just like, want to like ask, I mean, I don't know if I'll ask, maybe I'll just ask my next, my next date. I'll be like, (laughs) I really want someone that's just like really emotionally connected. Um, That makes sense. I've obviously dated people that are not so much. And it's just Mm -hmm. hard when I like feel like I put my feelings and emotions like out there all the time and not just for people in my intimate life, like on social media too. It's like, I not to say like you have to be that way, but I do want you to be that way with me. Like, yeah. 
that I can talk to and again, feel safe with, and I can have them feel like they can come to me and talk to me about anything. And I feel like it's just like, it would help us grow and support each other. So yeah, I would probably say yeah. that. Like emotionally. that I like that. Yeah. That's like basically what a relationship is for. So okay. yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree. I like that. Yeah. So anyways, but, <laughs> great. I love it. Just finding that. <laughs> I know. Yes, exactly. And like, it's out there. I've had some evidence that it is um, like, you know, I, I'm always looking for evidence for things. Like I've been in this, like, I mean, I just feel like how we're connected, you know, God, source universe, however my listeners want to put it. Um, but, you know, it's like, I feel like we've been, you know, our happiness has been taken away from us like so many times. And so people fear actually being happy than they do actually like the fear of like, losing something like they're actually sabotaging themselves and that's why they are not having the love they want or the career they want or whatever and so it's like okay how can I like instead of collecting the evidence that oh well when something happy happens when something good happens something bad always happens instead of collecting that evidence it's like how can I collect the evidence that okay I'm on the right path towards something greater like always and it may not, you know, so it's like, I've just been able to like shift my mindset a lot. And so it's not that I'm blind to like anything terrible or negative going on. Yeah. But I just like, don't focus on it, you know? So it's like, I'm constantly like, oh, like I had an experience with like a guy who was more emotionally connected than anyone ever before. And I'm like, okay, I don't like X, Y, and Z about this person. I don't think that we're aligned in many ways, but that I love. So let me pull out of this. God sent me more of that. <laughs> like, yeah, with a little bit of this. And <laughs> <keep that. laughs> for sure. For sure. And no, it's encouraging when you do find someone like that. You're like, it is out there. It is not in everyone and not everyone's for everyone, you know? So, but it is, it is really encouraging. It's like, okay, when you meet people, it's like, you don't have everything I want, but there is qualities. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, this has been amazing. Um, yeah. Anything you want to share? With yeah, no, I think it was good. It was so fun to talk and I'm just like really excited for you and what 2023 holds for you. I feel like there's so many, so many good things coming your way. So yeah. 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 Is there anything you're working on or working towards like a big dream goal? Nothing crazy. Um, I've been working on me and my older sister. I've been working on this little, like, um, I don't know, apologetics, like defending the faith kind of thing for, for, our, for Christianity. And so we've been kind of tapping into that, which has been fun and reading a lot of books and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing too crazy, but yeah, I'm excited for, for the year to see what, see what's to come. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of beautiful things are going to unfold for you that you don't even know exist. That's yes. right. They're hoping <laughs> for it. <laughs> oh, right. oh, good to chat with you. Yeah, tell people where they can find you in case they want to check you out. And Yes, I'm on Instagram and my username is heathermm22. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, honestly, like if you want like a daily dose of sunshine, just go to our page. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. You're the sweetest. Well, thank you, Kelly. It was so great chatting with you. Absolutely. You too. Keep in touch. And yeah, I'm sure we will obviously talk soon. Okay. But yeah. For sure. Um, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> if you loved this episode, please download, share, rate, and review. If you are ready to step into that next level version of you and grow your business and bank account, it's time to unleash your goddess magic and chase life with Kelly. You can start this epic expansion journey by diving into the goddess magic course bundle found at chaselifetogether.com. Please connect with me on Instagram at chase life with Kelly. Join the chase life with Kelly Facebook community and subscribe to my YouTube channel till next time. Create the life you crave, babe, and chase life with Kelly.